In this video, we're going to look at how we use a VT or speed time graph to describe motion, but also to calculate what's going on with an object's motion. So the first thing is that we need to be able to describe the motion based on our speed time graph. So we normally have speed on our y-axis, so the up and down, and our time on the x-axis, so across. If we see that the line is along the x-axis, it means that there is no speed. So we describe that motion as stopped or stationary. If it's parallel to the x-axis, but above it or below it, then it's a constant speed. That value for speed is not changing. But, by definition, if, as time continues, the speed changes, this is called acceleration, a change in speed. The pink line is showing speeding up, and the orange line is showing slowing down. It doesn't mean going backwards, it means slowing down. It still would be moving forwards, because all of these speed values are above zero. But in this one it would be slowing down, this one speeding up. So once we can describe the motion, we then have to be able to do some calculations with that motion. And that's our next bit. The most simple one to do is to calculate the acceleration. And acceleration, we're given is the change in speed over the change in time. Knowing our descriptions of motion, we can see in this example here that it is going at a constant speed here, so there is no acceleration. But here it starts to speed up at the 5 second mark. So, between 5 and 10 seconds, this 5 second period, there is acceleration occurring. So we can calculate the acceleration for this one. For that, we go 6 meters per second is the change in speed, so 10 minus 4, that's the difference in speed divided by 5 seconds, the difference in time, 10 minus 5. And 6 divided by 5, I hope my mental arithmetic is right here, is 1.2. And because it's acceleration, our unit is meters per second per second, or ms to the power of negative 2. So those are our most straightforward or simple calculations that we can do. There is, however, one more that's a little bit trickier. And that's finding from a graph like this how far an object has traveled. Now, excuse me, I've got to get rid of my whiteboard here and put another one in, so it's going to be a bit messy for a second. So this other skill that we need is to calculate the distance traveled. So I've tried to replicate the first 10 seconds of that previous graph where it was going at constant speed for the first 5 seconds at 4 metres per second, and then it sped up for the next 5 seconds until it got to 10 metres per second. The way we calculate the distance is we look at the area under the graph. So what we do is we break it up into polygons, so shapes. Here's a rectangle, here's a rectangle, and here's a triangle. And we use our geometry to work out the area within those basic shapes. So remember that a rectangle, or square, is base times height, and a triangle is half base times height. So I've broken it up into three sections, and I don't think my graph will be so obvious to see here, I'm sorry, so we'll do the best we can to remember what was there. The base of my section A, my first um, rectangle, is 5, from 0 to 5, and my height is from 0 to 4, so it's 4. So the distance travelled in that first section is 20 metres. Now the next section is a bit harder because it's B and C combined. Well, B is my triangle, and that is going from 4 to 10 for its height, which is 6 metres per second, and it's going from 5 seconds to 10 seconds, so 5 seconds is the base. So half times the base times height. So half times 5 times 6, which is 15 metres. So, in that section, B, 15 metres has been covered, but there's still this bit below it, and that's another rectangle. And again, it's another 5 seconds, and it's another difference of 4 metres per second, so the base is 5, the height is 4, and so I multiply those together. This is our trickiest thing, as I say, that we have to do with speed time graphs. We then add those values together, so the 20 plus the 15, plus the 20, means that our total distance is 55 metres.
Now the hardest bit in this is just checking that you are using the, the actual height of the polygon, not the entire height. So its height is not 10 for the section of B, it's only 6 for that bit there. That's the most common error that is made with something like this. So now we have got everything that we can use a speed time graph for. We can describe its motion, constant speed, accelerating, for example. We can calculate the acceleration. So here its difference is 6 divided by 5 is 1.2 meters per second per second. And we can also find out until the 10 second point how far it traveled by looking at the area of each simple polygon under the line.